Hi and welcome to my video on how to use internationalization, which is I18N, inside of Angular. So right here we have an article over at alligator.io which I wrote, which is essentially this video in article format. If we scroll down the bottom, you can see that we have the final result, which is making three applications here, but from one code base and each one has a different locale. So right here we are NUS, and here we are German, and of course down here at the bottom we are in French. We'll be looking at how to use our code base and NPM to build this in multiple different locales. So let's jump in to the app and create a new Angular app with the Angular CLI. So the first thing I'd like you to do is run npm install at angular slash cli dash g if you haven't installed the Angular CLI before. Let's now create a new Angular application by using ng new angular int. This will go ahead and create a new project and we don't want to use routing. And also we can either use CSS or SCSS. I selected SCSS, but it really doesn't matter for this project. So when we start thinking about translations and locale, the default locale for an Angular app is NUS. So we'll have to add other locales and update our configuration to build different versions of the app. So that'll be things like French, German, each one will be its own separate app, but it'll point toward messages, which we'll look at very soon. We can now CD into Angular Int, and of course open this up inside of Visual Studio Code, and after that run this inside of our browser using ng-serve. So now let's head over to appcomponent.html. Inside of here we have a simple Angular app, which you can see, but we're going to delete that and just make a section with one article, and inside of that a h1 which simply says under construction and a paragraph tag, which says practically the same thing. So we can make this a little bit more magical by heading over to appcomponent.scss and we can say for this section, we want to display that in flex we want to justify the content to the center, set the height to 100 view height, and then we want to set a background, which is equal to a linear gradient, and that will go to the right, starting from a purple to a different shade, like so. Finally, we'll also need to align the items inside of the center. So not too bad. Now we need to head over to the article, and inside of here, we want to have the text align to be center, the color to be white, as well as different things such as the border. Finally, we'll add a box shadow. And we'll simply just set that to RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0 0.8. And here we have a very simple application. The final thing we'll need to do is head over to styles.scss and make a global HTML and body in which we'll set the padding and margin to be zero. So there we have it. We've got our application on screen. Now let's look at how we can mark text for translation. So inside of appcomponent.html, let's on the items that we want to translate add an i18n directive. Once we do that, this tells Angular that we want to change this text into a different locale. By running ngxi18n in the terminal, this will extract all of the messages that have this i18n attribute, and then it will make a messages file out of that. Let's make that easier for ourselves by heading over to package.json, and inside of here we want to make an int extract. That's simply just the name of the script. It doesn't mean anything other than internationalization extract. So let's ngxi18n. Remember that you have to add the x here instead of just i18n, it is xi18n. Let's pull up the terminal now. And from within this folder, let's run npm run 
int extract. And that will go ahead and run that command. And the reason we have put it in the package.json, it just makes it much easier and we'll look at the changes we'll need to make to this in the future. So as you can see, we've run that command, we have no errors. And if we look inside of our source folder, we can see that we have this messages.xlf. This is an XML file, and sometimes it can be hard to read and understand what's going on. But if we just focus on these trans units, this is a translation unit, and the source is equal to the i18n attributes that we placed on those HTML tags. So you can see here we have this under construction, and we have this under here, this page is under construction, and as well as the context, i.e. where the actual translation unit is, as well as the particular line number. So that's good, we now have this file, but it doesn't really help us at the moment because we aren't translating that to another language. Let's say now we have a translator and we want to give this file to the translator and we want to provide them with some information that helps them translate the message. So let's head back over to appcomponent.html and inside of here, we want to add the title for the under construction card. And we'll do the same for the bottom, but this time it will be the description. When it comes to your components and actually each individual element, I advise you to really get in deep as to how you can make the meaning of this be important so that you can give a decent description to whoever's translating it. So this here is the description. I used the word meaning a moment ago, but we'll look at how we can add meaning once more with the pipe. So let's add a pipe before this on both statements. Now we can add a meaning. So this would be card description. And this one will be card header. Now this really wouldn't scale well because anytime we have the same meaning, it will come out to effectively be the same translation. So you want to make sure that your meaning prior to the description really matches the meaning of the content. But for our intents and purposes, everything is just okay. So now let's add an ID. And by adding an ID, we can enforce persistence when we generate our translations. So that's done by adding two at signs. So we have this here, at at construction header. And we'll do the same for the description, which would be construction description, like so. So we've changed quite a bit. Let's now build our translations once again. Let's run npm run int extract. So inside of messages.xlf, you can see that we have translations with a description and meaning. But at the moment, we're only targeting that nus locale. Let's head over to package.json and update our script so we can start looking at other locales. Inside of our int extract script, let's put an output path equal to locale. Then let's run our npm run int extract once again. And now you can see we have this locale with messages.xlf. Delete the first version that we created earlier. And inside of here, you want to copy that and you want to paste that over the top. So now we have messages1.xlf. Let's change that to be messages.fr.xlf and do it once more for messages.de. So let's start off with the French version of our app. What we want to do is we have this source here and that has under construction. We want to add another thing called target. So add this tag underneath, which says target, and that should be the translation. So I've added the French version of this here. Now this was done with Google Translate because my French skills and German skills aren't quite up to scratch. So let's do the same for this page is under construction. So hopefully you can see now, we have two targets for that source. So anytime we see that source, it will replace it 
with this target inside of the French version of the application. Let's go ahead over to messages.de.xlf and we can copy this before if you want and paste it over the top and we'll head over to the first target and we'll change that to the German version. And finally, the second target for the construction description. So hopefully you can tell me in the comments section below whether this is correct or not. I'm not even going to attempt to say it. <laughs> so that's our translations here in Germany too. So we now have two versions of our application when it comes to thinking about our translations. We can use the CLI over at angular.json and we can change this configuration file to build a separate project per translation. So I will admit there's quite a bit inside of this file. I want you to head over to projects, angular int, and then we want to scroll down to architect, build, and once again, scroll down to configurations. And here we have the configurations for our app. This is when we build the application. We can make various different decisions, such as here we see production, and that does things like optimize the build. We have no source maps, we're extracting the CSS, and so on. To make this easier to read for us, I'm going to get rid of that for now. And then underneath, we're going to put an FR with an object and a DE with an object. These are going to be relatively similar. We want to use ahead of time compilation for both. So let's put true. We want to put the output path equal to dist slash under CFR. So this will be your application, but then we want to put the dash FR and this allows us to determine what is the French build and what isn't. We want to set the I18 file. So the I18 end file is equal to source locale messages.fr.xlf. We want to set the I18 format to xlf, the I18 locale to fr. And finally, if there are any missing translations, we want to error. You don't have to add this here at the moment. I wouldn't advise it if you're just adding translations into your app. Essentially, this just makes your app so it conforms to having all translations. And if there aren't a particular translation, you'll see an error for that. Let's copy paste this. I'm using shift and the arrow keys to go up and down. And then we'll go down to DE. We'll paste that in, and anytime we see FR, we want to change that for DE. So those three times. At this point, we've now set it so that the Angular CLI can build our project for DE and FR, as well as our standard NUS. But I'd like to make a serve option, which does a similar thing. So let's head down to serve and configurations. And we'll set an FR. And we'll copy this browser target just above, just makes it easier for us. And then instead of building for production, we want to build for FR. And finally, we'll do the same for DE. And this time it will build for DE. Let's now head back over to our package.json. Inside of here, we can add some different scripts, such as start FR that will run ng serve with the configuration equal to fr. We'll do the same here for de. And then we can do the same for the build. So I'm going to copy this start, head down to build, say build fr, build de, and we'll replace serve with build. Now we're at a stage, given the fact that we set up our configuration to test the app inside of the terminal. So open up the terminal inside of VS Code or simply use one outside of it. And we've already got the project running, so that's on 4200. So we want to run npm run start colon fr. We want to put two dashes and that will allow us to pass the port 
at 4, 2, or 1. Then we'll open up another terminal window and we'll run npm run start colon de two dashes and then two dashes again for the port putting it at 4202. And then if we open up all of our applications inside of the browser, you should be able to see under construction in a variety of different locales. So there we have it. That's our application using English, French, and German. I'd love to know what you think about this inside of the comments section below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated with more content. And until next time, I'll see you very soon in my next video.